Hey guys, welcome to Tragedy of the Commons Part 2. I'm going to do two examples here, one with a little bit of math and one that hints at a lot of bit of math. Uh, so I'm picking up where I left off. Intuition-wise, I'm not going to explain much of what the Tragedy of the Commons is. Go see Part 1 if you need to. Uh, but let's start with an industry. We're not going to have any of the constant returns to scale part in this example. But let's just say there's a total revenue curve of Q times 20 minus Q. We want to find the average revenue curve, which average revenue is equal to total revenue over Q. Comes out to be 20 minus Q. And if we want to graph that, it's going to look something like this. Average revenue, and there's a 20 there and a 20 there. It's not the scale, and you'll get over it. Uh, there's one of our lines. This is the one that we use to choose how many boats will be in the market if the boats act in a self-interested manner. The next thing we're interested in is marginal revenue. And marginal revenue is defined as the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity, or change in total revenue over change in quantity, either way. In this case, that's 20 minus 2Q, which looks like that. Marginal revenue, and it intersects at 10 there. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to introduce a marginal cost for the boats of let's say four bucks each. And so what's that look like on our graph? That gives us a four dollar constant marginal cost. And so what I'm gonna be doing here is let's just start by finding how many boats will be in the market and how many boats would be in the market that would maximize industry well-being. And then we'll move on to a scarier example. So, if I want to find how many boats will be in the unregulated market, I'm looking for this intersection where average revenue meets marginal cost. So I'm going to set average revenue equal to marginal cost. That's 20 minus Q equals 4. And from that, you're going to get Q equals 16. Now, what about the other intersection? The one right here, where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's the one that's best for our industry. So that's the one that we're going to call optimal for our society. Uh, let's see. So marginal cost equals marginal revenue. That's 4 equals 20 minus 2Q. And that comes out to be Q equals 8. So we've got our optimal quantity of 8 and our market quantity of 16. And that gives us a brief idea of how you might solve one of these problems. Now we could transfer to a more difficult version of it. And I'm going to show how you would go about solving it. I'm not making my students do this, but I don't know if your teacher is going to make you do it or not, so I'm going to show you anyway. Uh, my book has a graph that looks like this, and then there's some marginal cost that goes through it all. And so it's got this area with the constant returns to scale, and then after a certain amount, then we start affecting each other. So how would you go about solving for the optimal quantity or for the market quantity in this situation. Well, it's a little trickier because I need different equations on either side of this dotted line. For instance, before that dotted line, let's just say there's this Q level equal to A. Before this dotted line, my marginal revenue equals my average revenue equals I don't know, let's just put some R up here for revenue, equals R. Now after this dotted line, after point A, marginal revenue is equal to R minus, I'll just say it's got a slope of negative B times whatever the Q is minus A. And that's going to start to make things really messy having it look like this. Uh, for instance, if I were to use this marginal revenue curve to generate total revenue, again, this is why I'm not sure if this is a useful video or not, because I don't know how many of you guys are actually going to have to do this. 
Uh, total revenue is equal to the area under the marginal revenue curve, which is equal to the integral from zero to Q of R minus B times Q minus A, all of that DQ. Uh, maybe you didn't have to do any calculus. Maybe I gave you a total revenue curve to start with. I don't know. This is just a way of finding the area under this marginal revenue curve at any given Q. And it gives me my total revenue curve. Whatever nasty function comes out of that, I could divide it by Q and get the average revenue curve. Like we can do all kinds of stuff like that if we need to, but the gist of it's still gonna be the same. I will find the market quantity by setting average revenue equal to marginal cost. And I will find the optimal quantity by setting the marginal revenue equal to the marginal cost. So something else we could be interested in, we know our optimal, we know our market quantity. If we want to use policy to bring ourselves to the optimal amount, we have a couple of options. One would be to issue eight permits. Another would be to set some sort of a tax or fee per boat. That's the one that requires a little bit more math on our part. So I wanna talk about how to set the optimal tax. And the idea behind it, I want to set my tax equal to the gap between my average revenue curve and my marginal cost curve at the optimal quantity. By doing this, I will create extra costs for the boats so that the revenue that they receive is equal to the marginal revenue to the industry. It'll make the boats act in the interest of the industry. So how would I do that? Well, I've got an average revenue curve and it is equal to 20 minus Q. I'll just plug in a Q of eight. Average revenue of eight is equal to 20 minus eight equals 12. And so how do I set my tax? Well, my tax is equal to the average revenue at that point minus the marginal cost, which is 12 minus four, which comes up to eight. So if I set an $8 tax, the $8 tax being the gap in this area, that would induce, be, in, that would put incentives on my boats that would lead us to eight boats fishing in the water. So I don't know if this video is helpful to you. Hopefully it was. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and see you next time.